Prime Minister Netanyahu, Sarah Netanyahu, ministers and members of the Knesset, members of Congress, officers and members of the United States Armed Forces, members of the Israel Defense Forces, other government leaders from both countries and from around the world, honored guests, dear friends, Orchim Nechbadim. Tammy and I thank you so much for joining us tonight. Welcome to the United States Embassy's celebration of the 241st anniversary of the independence of the United States of America. So many people deserve thanks for creating this extraordinary event. From the Embassy's Deputy Chief of Mission, Leslie So, who handled this task so well, so ably, until my arrival. Tom Genton, uh, our MC this evening, his wonderful wife. Sarah, who are leaving us now after three years and who we wish good luck and Godspeed on their next mission. And the literally hundreds and hundreds of embassy volunteers who worked tirelessly to bring this event to fruition. Most of the volunteers you'll see around wearing blue staff shirts, I urge you to directly thank them for their extraordinary efforts. From the bottom of my heart, you are all amazing. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, their names appear uh, all over this uh, beautiful uh, event. We have more than 40 sponsors, 40 private companies who wanted to make a statement that they support the relationship between the United States and the State of Israel. Thank you all for helping us make this event so successful. It was 45 years ago that I hosted, that I last hosted a party in Israel. Uh, it was my bar mitzvah at the Western Wall. As the son of a rabbi of modest means, I can assure you that my bar mitzvah party bore absolutely no resemblance to the party that we are attending here tonight. But the spirit of both parties is exactly the same. It is the spirit of patriotic Americans committed to increasing the ties and enhancing the relationship between the United States and the State of Israel. That's what that's what my family stood for 45 years ago, and that's still who we are today. It was just two months ago that I had the honor and privilege to be the master of ceremonies at the very first party ever hosted by the White House to commemorate Israel's Independence Day. From the famous Indian Treaty Room in the White House, I had the privilege to proclaim Yom Ha'atzma'ut Sameach Lemidinat Yisrael. Happy Independence Day to the State of Israel. Today, it is my great pleasure to return the favor from 6,000 miles away. And so let me proclaim Yom Ha'atzma'ut Sameach Le'artzot Habrit. Happy Independence Day to the United States. At the Israel Independence Day event in Washington, I offered the words of King David of Psalm 118. Zehayom asa Hashem nagila v'nismechabo. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. The same words apply to our beloved United States as well. America is simply the most successful social experiment in world history. The great Latin phrase, e pluribus unum, from many come one, perfectly describes the unique, the unique ability of the United States, unparalleled in any other civilization, to combine peoples from all cultures, races, and religions into a society sharing a commitment to freedom, democracy, and equal opportunity. On this 241st anniversary of American independence, there is more work to do, but so very much that we can be proud of. Here in Israel, we find ourselves at the source 
of many of the Judeo-Christian values that spawned the great American enterprise. Since President Kennedy, almost every president has referred to the United States as a shining city on a hill. They were all hearkening back to the famous speech of the pilgrim, John Winthrop, in the year 1630, while still aboard a ship waiting to make land in Massachusetts Bay. Winthrop implored his followers to be faithful to the teachings of the Jewish prophet Micah, to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God. He added that if the new immigrants would act in accordance with God's will, they will, quote, find that the God of Israel is among us. And finally, he referred to New England as a, quote, city upon a hill with the eyes of all people upon us. That city upon a hill, so embedded in America's self-image for centuries, also refers to another city on a hill a little closer to us tonight, the city of Jerusalem. So much of us who are Americans derive, uh, so much of us derive who we are from the teachings of ancient Israel. And perhaps for that reason, it is no surprise that the United States and Israel have the most special of special relationships. We have, of course, common enemies that unite us. We have extraordinary military and intelligence cooperation that unites us. We have cultural exchanges, international trade, and even a cybersecurity group formed just this past week that unites us. But our collective core, what fundamentally unites us, is that we are the two shining cities on a hill, drawn together by a shared history, shared values, and I believe, a shared destiny of continued greatness. One of the things that makes us great is our honor and respect for the sacrifice of those who have preceded us. I hope that some of you had a chance to look at the beautiful artwork that is inside this residence. Um, among the artwork you will see in the People's House uh, of Israel is a beautiful painting by Hadar Golden, an Israeli soldier who lost his life in the defense of his nation in 2014, and whose parents, who are here tonight, still grieve not just for their lost son, but because his remains have not yet been returned. Let us take a moment to reflect upon Hadar and upon every soldier of the United States Armed Forces and the Israeli Defense Forces who paid the ultimate sacrifice in the defense of their respective nations. We are here only because of their service, their bravery, and their sacrifice. We owe them a debt of gratitude that can never be repaid. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention on the eve of July 4th. The 4th of July is, of course, the date that the Prime Minister of Israel, Prime Minister Netanyahu, lost his beloved brother in the extraordinary heroic uh, raid on Entebbe. In the few short months since I have had the honor to serve as the U.S. Ambassador to Israel, I have enjoyed a series of firsts. I was the first ambassador to greet the President within the first week of taking office. I was the first ambassador to accompany the President in visiting the Kotel Hamaravi, the Western Wall. Tonight, Tonight is yet another first. In just a moment, I will be the first ambassador to introduce the Prime Minister of Israel twice in one day. Just hours ago, I had the privilege to introduce the Prime Minister as he addressed thousands of U.S. sailors on board the aircraft carrier USS George H. W. Bush. At nearly and nearly 1,100 feet long. She is the largest military ship in the world. The Bush is 
anchored right now about four kilometers off the coast of Haifa, and it is in Israel's territorial waters for the first time in 17 years. Let me also mention one more first. For approximately 10 years, the USS George H.W. Bush has toured the world from the Mediterranean, the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian Ocean. It's been all around the world. Today was the very first time that it ever welcomed a head of state to visit its premises. And of course, that head of state was the Prime Minister of Israel. As I toured the carrier, I marveled at its size, its majesty, its extraordinary capacity to deliver all by itself, a magnitude of force unmatched by most countries, let alone by most vessels. But what I marveled at most was how every single man and woman aboard that ship was committed to the American value of peace. Peace through strength, to be sure, but peace nonetheless. And so every member uh, of that ship and every member of the U.S. military hopes never to fire a shot. They hope that by their sheer demonstration of strength and courage to keep the world safe. Needless to say, I will never forget that visit, and I suspect neither will the Prime Minister. And as I thought this afternoon on the helicopter coming back to State Dove Airport, I thought about the fundamental principle of peace through strength, which is such a core value of the Trump administration. And I thought about something my father used to say every Shabbat morning as he concluded his services. He would quote from the last sentence of Psalm 29. Hashem oz liamo yitain, Hashem yivarech et amo bashalom. The Lord will give strength unto his people, the Lord will bless his nation with peace. And I thought as I was flying back, it's sort of an odd statement. If God is blessing his people with peace, why do they need strength? Isn't strength what you need when you don't have peace? And it occurred to me that King David, some 3,000 years ago, had recognized something very profound. While we can all want to be blessed with peace, we can only achieve this peace if we are strong. This message is well known to every sailor aboard the USS Bush. It is a guiding principle of the State of Israel, and it is a foundational cornerstone of the Trump administration. May we all succeed in achieving peace through strength in the years ahead. Uh, on behalf of all that are here, we pray that God should bless the United States of America on its 241st birthday, that God should bless the State of Israel and that God should bless the unbreakable bond between the two countries.